Elder Scrolls Online, biggest problem. Really? Just one problem? I thought this whole thing is honestly a complete disaster. The Elder Scrolls Online was released in 2014, making 2024 the 10 year anniversary of the game's launch, at least on PC, which is a huge milestone. And getting here. True, that is impressive though. It has been quite a journey, but after a rough start, ESO has performed consistently well over time, making it one of the most popular MMOs available today. But even. Uh, consistently well is an overstatement, honestly. We would not consider the success of Elder Scrolls Online consistently well on the mass scale, okay? Most people would not call this a success. With its popularity and its consistency, no one is talking about this huge problem, which is affecting player enjoyment and progression, and this is an even bigger problem for more Well, no one's talking about Elder Scrolls Online, honestly. General. Even though it does have its moments, it does look kinda good at some places, not gonna lie. Experienced players and MMO veterans. Now in this video, I'll dive into exactly what this problem is, and how it can be fixed to help refresh this game moving into year 10 and beyond. Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel, HTM here. If you don't know me, I cover MMOs and RPGs right here on YouTube, but my bigger focus over the past Giga Chad. five years or so has definitely been the Elder Scrolls Online. Even though the game has its problems like any other game does, especially those in the MMO space, ESO is still a very good game at its core. And if you've never played it before, I did a full overview here in this video, which I'll link down below if you want to get a good idea of where the game is now heading into the new year. And let me start by saying that 2023 was probably one of the best years for ESO in its entire history, both in terms of content and game updates. I mean, for one... Th yeah, we heard about the, the endless dungeon thing. We, we, we checked it out. Ah, I, and I made fun of it. Because ESO literally decided to take Thorgast, the worst part of the Shadowlands, and slap it right in. With worse mechanics than Thorgast. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then considering the ESO, people who are playing it are pretty, pretty insanely defensive about that game because, you know, if you like something, you like it, and you obviously are going to defend it. They said, no, this is better than Thorgast. No. Dude, at the time, this mechanic was not even out for a week. And people were saying, oh my god, this is going to withstand the test of time. People are going to play this in for forever, in a year's time. Oh man, I got bad news for you, buddy. Thing 2023 saw the launch of ESO's seventh class, the new Arcanist class, which was extremely well done and a welcome surprise for the game, which was starting to show its age. Now, the Arcanist to me is the perfect class for a game like. I don't know what it means to do a class right in a game like ESO, because ESO's biggest problem is the fact that you have, like, what, five clickable abilities? And that's pretty bad like the elder scrolls online on the one hand it is extremely easy to pick up and very user friendly meaning that new players who've never experienced eso before could drop in on the arcanist and immediately feel powerful its core abilities like the fate carver beam are just god tier for most forms of content and the class toolkit makes sense and synergizes really well while also looking and sounding amazing by the way huge props to the art, animation, and sound design. By the way, why does not Arcanist look like a fell mage? Yeah, I also don't understand. You would expect something that doesn't look like a fell mage from World of Warcraft. I I mean, maybe I don't know some ESO lore? Well, I don't, because ESO lore is stupid. Well, to be honest, you know... Elder Scrolls lore in general is pretty stupid. The world makes no sense. The economy makes no sense. The people make no sense. The any Nothing makes any sense in ESO if you think a little bit about it, it, it and any implication. You, ha you have things like transmute gold wildly available to the public and yet your currency is gold? You understand people can just transmute it out of, you know, something as cheap as iron, right? You, you have this ability to summon spectral weapons that weigh nothing, are as good as steel and whatnot, or better, in general, and blacksmiths still exist? Do you understand? N not a single kingdom would ever use steel weaponry as anything but ornamental if everyone could just learn as a, in a pretty easy manner to summon their weapons out of thin air. 
You understand how bad that is? Again, the Elder Scrolls universe is... It, it, it's just mind-numbingly stupid. How, how nothing in this universe makes sense why it's happening. So, you know, it is what it is. Design teams on this one because the Arcanist design is just fantastic. But also for experienced players like myself, the class had just enough depth with new mechanics like the Crux system, which included unique ways to build and spend this new resource to make the gameplay feel really fresh and interesting. So all in all, the Arcanist class for ESO was a huge win for the game. And I know it brought plenty of new players and new interest in 2023. But that's not all. 2023 also saw some really amazing zones get added to the game, including the Telvanni Peninsula and one of my all-time favorite additions to ESO, the Daedric Plain of Apocrypha, which is just such an achievement. Aesthetically, I did an entire video on... So, Elder Scrolls Online, I googled ESO average player count. So, couldn't... I think this is from... St oh, it's Steam Shots. Yeah, so in the last 30 days, it's 13k on average. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it it's at least popular, I think. Peak players, 20, uh, 20k. I mean, hey, it's, it's more popular than a dead game, I'll give you that. But again, calling me is so popular, you're deluding yourself. It's the same thing. Did calling ESO successful and popular is the equivalent of calling New World successful and popular? Okay. I mean, it's if you like it, you like it, and that's good. Honestly, more more power to you. I can't say anything bad. But in general, when people want to ca call ESO successful, I'm like, dude, dude, dude. That you gonna de de redefine anything the word successful means? And this actually when it first came out because I was honestly floored by the level of detail and the overall experience this new zone brought to the game. The Necrom storyline was also very good and sets up a bigger story arc which I'm sure we're going to see play out over 2024, maybe even beyond that. If you have not played Necrom yet, I won't spoil anything here other than to say the ESO has done something completely new with the Elder Scrolls lore which is pretty exciting and you should definitely check it out. Of course, ESO also invested significant time into bug fixes and quality of life improvements in quarter three of 2023, which I hope they continue to do moving forward, okay. as I think that's also very positive for the game, and it's something the community has been asking for a long time. But I also want to talk about ESO's biggest win in 2023, which it turns out also showcases its biggest problem heading into 2024 and beyond and that is the Infinite Archive. Now at face value, the Infinite Archive is actually really well-designed content for the Elder Scrolls Online. First of all, it takes Targast of anything and bruh. It's completely it's, free it's for all players. It's not a DLC, it's not a chapter. It's not gonna be found in the Crown Store. It's just free to play content, which is amazing. I actually hope that ESO continues to go down this road of free replayable content to expand on what's already available in the game, moving into 2024 and beyond. I think this is really great. I also appreciate that it doesn't take, you know, a top level coordinated group to do well in the infinite archive. I mean, yes, you can enter with a second player, and if both of you and your friend are good at ESO and you have the right build, you'll be able to progress really far. But they also made it so that solo players can enter the infinite archive as well. Uh, five buttons. One button less than a new world. This is why ESO failed. Well, or you can play solo with a companion, and either way, you can still progress, you can have fun, and still earn rewards. I'm also a big fan of how they set up the Infinite Archive itself into this roguelike experience, similar to other recent games like Hades, for example where your goal is basically just to progress as far as possible without losing all your lives. And you also have to improve your character throughout with various buffs and power. I like that the comparison is Hades instead of the clear, obvious choice of Torghast. Or ups along Great the way. Stuff. The infinite archive version of those buffs called Visions and Verses, I think is also done pretty well as a system overall, as it mixes in a bit of randomness and excitement into each run. But I think honestly, we probably will see a bit more balancing coming to certain visions in the future as they're just ultra powerful. So don't get me wrong. I really like what ESO did with the infinite archive. It's the content 
that I'm playing right now in ESO the most actually, but there is still one crucial aspect that I think misses the mark, which leads to this much bigger problem. Well, to be fair again, it's good that people like it. We need to talk about, and that is itemization. You see, when the Infinite Archive was originally pitched to us as players, we were told that the rewards for beating it would be something completely new to ESO, something called class sets. Now, I don't know about you, but just that name itself, class sets, to me has a certain meaning or expectation in the wow. world of MMOs. I mean, to me, class sets or class weapons based on what I've seen in other games should be better than the typical weapons and armor that you can get from normal activities, that they should be special. In fact, going way back to older MMOs like EverQuest, for example, class weapons were some of the most powerful items you could get in the game, and they actually altered the way you played your class in significant and meaningful ways. Now the problem though with ESO's version of class sets is that they're not particularly better than anything that we already have access to in the game, and in some cases they're actually worse, which I think is a huge missed opportunity in more ways than one. I'm gonna get deep into this, so stay with me here. First, let's break down those class sets and explain why they are such a big problem, not just for the Infinite Archive, but for the overall progression of ESO. Now, the most obvious reason why the new class sets are not great is due to the bonus of the item sets themselves. As I mentioned, generally these new bonuses are not that special, and in most cases you wouldn't decide to use these sets over the current gear that you're already wearing. Arguably the best class set bonus belongs to the Dragonite class set, which gives you on-demand access to major heroism, plus a new buff that boosts your healing and your damage shields. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about this. So, ESO does have a couple of cool things about it. One of them is that you have like a billion sets like this. Now the bad part about the ESO is the fact that it has a billion sets like this. And yeah, uh, so two items adds 129 magic recovery. Yay. Three items adds 1,206 maximum life. Yay. Four items adds 100 weapon damage and spell damage. Yay. Five items. Uh, at the dawn of the new age, you will be able to cast the Vibrant Vori skill, go back to their nest, collect the five eggs of the dragons, turn them into the dragon balls, and then you will have the ability to summon Koda and the Barbarian to help you on the quest of finding the shipwreck of Narnia. In Narnia, you will travel to Poseidon's kingdom that is a different domain. Yeah, it's too long. It's, it's, l every set has a description this long. I don't like it. Not a lot of people do. Again, again, not, there's a reason this game is not successful. And this is probably one of them. Because whatever is written here already, I can tell you, is completely boring. Now, this is not bad, and I could see some players replacing one of their current five piece sets to use this bonus, you know, depending on specific content. Now, there's a Necromancer class set called Nobility in Decay. This is also pretty interesting. And I think more closely meets the expectations of a quote class set by giving you an alternate or unique way to play the class. In this case, the Necromancer set can treat you as an extra corpse. Casting a Bone Tyrant ability while in combat grants you that's favor for 16 seconds, which increases your healing received and reduces damage taken by 12% based on your missing health. This can occur every 20 seconds and it and is reduced by two seconds for each slotted bone type ability. Casting a corpse consume corpse consume consumes that uh, that's favor three treats you as a corpse. Okay, so you see what's the problem here? This is yeah, this is this is not a new way of playing the game. This just means it's easier to get a corpse and some mechanics. This does not change the way you play your class. This is a misconception. Okay. This is not a unique thing. This makes it easier to do whatever the hell you're doing. Okay? That's it. This does not give you a new way to play the game. This does not give you a new way to do anything, honestly. And this is, a, this is again, a huge problem with ESO. Because this, this is not good. Items, uh, items sits like this are bad. They're really boring. Literally every single item set in the ESO gets overthrown by World of Warcraft just having a mastery stat on items that boosts unique things your class does. It's literally that bad. 
Hey, it is what it is. Letting you more easily cast corpse consuming abilities like Mystic Siphon or Detonating Siphon. So this is good in the sense that it expands on what your class can already do and it can give you new options. But is it really good enough for you to replace one of the two main 5P sets that you're currently using? No, because in most it's not cases, a new option. I don't think so. And again, this illustrates- Oh, and again, uh, you can see how badly the game is designed here. As you can see here, there's like a billion things on the ground. And as I have stated before, and I will state again, because this is going to probably not be changed by any game ever until the day that I die, which is probably never because I'm immortal. <laughs> humans. Anyway, it's the fact that Lost Ark has taught me what good boss design is. Lost Ark has unquestionably the best boss design in the game, in any game. The bosses are interesting, the bosses are challenging, the bosses have unique moves, and they're cool. And you know what Lost Ark never does? It never has a situation where a boss just, you know, shits something on the ground and then you need to avoid it. Now, if the boss places anything on the ground, that is your mechanic. That is the mechanic that you currently need to pay all your attention to. Nothing else but the thing on the ground matters. And you can see how stupid it looks, how stupid it probably feels when you're playing a game like Elder Scrolls or World of Warcraft or whatever, where there's something on the ground and it just shits something on the ground for the sake of it being on the ground. Now, if your game that you are playing ever a boss places something on the ground and it's not the main mechanic that you need to deal with, it's a poorly badly designed encounter that's it no excuses never okay it is what it is and this is a bad mechanic because look at him he's just standing here taking the damage and he doesn't care why because this is not supposed to be engaging this is not supposed to be threatening this is just something on the ground for the sake of something being on the ground he sets that you're currently using in most cases, I don't think so. And again, this illustrates one of the main problems with class sets, which is even those that are somewhat unique still require you to remove the best bonuses from the other sets that you're currently wearing. Basically, you have to give up something to get this extra, you know, special class set or specialization. But there is a way that ESO could have solved this and made it better pretty easily, which I'm gonna talk about next. But other class sets like the Nightblade set, for example, really don't do anything interesting at all. In this case, That's only funny. increasing the damage and healing of a few <laughs> skills that not every Nightblade build is going to use anyway. Now, I do like the fact that the ESO dev team decided- Yeah, look at how poorly this is designed. Every item set is just essentially 50 lines of the stuff that you don't care about. And then it says, increase X damage by five, decrease damage by five. There, again, there's a reason ESO was never successful. That each class set would focus on one particular skill line. So this particular set, Soul Cleaver, buffs all of your siphoning skills as a Nightblade. This does meet the concept of what a class set should do, I think. Plus it also leaves room for future class sets. So eventually, you know, we'll have a Nightblade assassination focus set and the Nightblade shadow set. But again, the bonuses that we're seeing on these sets are not good enough to force you to drop a better set, like let's say Order's Wrath, which buffs all of your offensive abilities, or even less popular sets like Forest Wraith, which actually buffs all of your class skills, not just one specific skill line, and already exists in the game. But the main problem I see isn't that the new class sets are not good enough. The bigger problem for ESO is its item. Oh, he was gonna say, yeah, itemization is a problem and your, all your items are just increase at X percent of what? structure specifically that we have way too many 5p sets to choose from and that characters can only wear two bonuses at a time which is extremely limiting so let's talk about sets for a minute in ESO I think at this point the game has something like 400 or more sets and that is a Told lot you. not only is this extremely overwhelming for new players but for experienced players it's not a great experience either because we know that only a handful of these sets are really actually worth getting. For example, I have dozens and dozens of builds and different options posted on my website, hacktheminotaur.com, but all of those builds use maybe 
15 to 20 different sets in total. And yeah, I can try to make builds using other sets, but they just won't be as good because the majority of those sets are not that good themselves. So the majority of those 400 plus sets you'll never bother using because a small number of the sets are just significantly better than all the rest. And in this current system, it's nearly impossible to introduce something special like quote class sets because they will either be extremely overpowered and every class is going to use their class set and nothing else, or they will actually be underpowered, which I believe is what's happening here with the introduction of class sets for Infinite Archive, and they're just not going to be used that much because we have better options. Now, I think the solution here is really obvious, and hopefully you'll see it too after I explain how this could work. The solution is not to keep introducing more and more sets to the game. This itemization route is already maxed out with 10 years now of ESO reusing the same set types, especially five piece <laughs> item sets. So I think continuing down that road would be Funny. a mistake. The better solution, at least in my opinion, is just to introduce more gear slots into the game and other equipment options instead. The idea here of class sets. Yeah. You see why ESO also can't actually make progress? It's because the people who play ESO like a bad game. Now, technically there's nothing wrong with you liking a bad game, again. But the fact is that when you want to iterate on a bad game, you're not actually, chances are you're not actually giving advice that makes the bad game into a good game. You just keep, you just pile on advice that makes the bad game into a worse game. And that's pretty much it. So, his solutions to sets being irrelevant is not a redesigning how sets work or whatever. But his solution for that is just give us more gear slots so we can equip more sets. You, you see how that just doesn't work? Actually is a perfect chance for ESO to do this. And here's how I imagined it would work in my own mind. Imagine instead of just adding seven more five piece sets to the game, that they simply introduced one new gear slot instead, your class slot. Now call this whatever you want. It could be called your class affinity or your class inspiration. I had a feeling, I don't know where it was, but I had a, I had a slight feeling that this is gonna go the way of Diablo 3. You know when Diablo 3 introduced... I forgot what's the mechanic called. Uh, oh, it was just the Haradrim Cube, right? Yeah, the Haradrim Cube. Where you could slot some legendary uh, passives and affixes from items into certain gear slots as a bonus. Bruh, if your game is ever, ever doing that, you have just failed. Because that means that... At the bare, bare minimum, that means that you have no idea how to balance your game because that means you're giving up on the balance and you're just introducing a way that people can slot in something that everyone else will slot in by default. You have literally just given up on the game. And that is also a thing that, uh, that I think is very telling for bad game design. It's the fact when there's something that everyone wants and the developers don't nerf that, don't buff other things, and they just give you a dedicated slot for that one thing. It is so stupid. And all, all the games that do that, I think, fail. Without question, always. They just fail. ...or you're focused, whatever. The name doesn't really matter. The point is, this would be a new gear slot, and the only bonuses that could go here would be your class bonus. Now, this immediately solves the problem of these new class sets not being good enough, to replace your current sets because you wouldn't have to replace your current sets at all to use them. You wouldn't even have to change your build either. Instead, a new slot with a new series of bonuses could be added and this would simply let you extend or refine your build into something slightly better. So hopefully you see where I'm going with this. A, a class set slot would give ESO a lot more room to grow. I actually can't believe they haven't introduced any new gear slots to the game yet. I mean, think about it, 10 years and the game has never gotten one new gear slot. Hey, at least developers are smart about that one, Chief, not gonna lie. In any case, is that it? Lot in that time. That's crazy. And I think it's a big missed opportunity as well. I mean, just imagine the possibilities for builds and theory crafting that could come easily from this one new class slot. It would almost- There's no theories in uh, craft- there's no, there's no theory crafting that can be made 
when your gear is literally plus x percent minus x percent there's still theory crafting to be like adding subclasses into the elder scrolls online which i think would be fantastic especially for experienced players like myself who need some reason to keep playing at endgame with this class focus slot now your class has three additional options to specialize into when you're ready to take your build to the next level let's look at one class as an example with the nightblade now we already have the one class set that boosts siphoning abilities the soul cleaver set that's fine it fits the theme if you want to be a nightblade siphoner or a blood mage style of build now personally i would just extend this a bit to make it a little more interesting so not only would it make your siphoning abilities do more damage and cost less but maybe your other nightblade skills would now heal you for five or ten percent of the damage they dealt to really amp up that siphoning aesthetic but not be too overpowered and again this bonus would come into a separate gear slot so you wouldn't lose anything in your current build to make this happen it's doing that also by the way the funny part is that would require a whole rebalance of the whole game because obviously that would be op obviously that would be absolutely op because you could like he said you could take what makes the night blade soul drainer work or whatever you could slot it in and then you could slot just you know more damage or defensives on top of it and that would be broken so adding that slot would completely break all the balance in the game so it is what it is anyway i think that's it wow i mean there's a reason that's that 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 that's not his channel this is his channel hack the minotaur well i guess this is his website who cares? Anyway, Elder Scrolls Online. There's a reason it does not work out. It's a, there's a reason the game is not loved by anyone. Anyway, this was Quizzer said. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.